grilled octopus. I'm gonna get ooh, a very juicy bit here. The moment of truth. Yeah. Mm. Yum. Yes, we have arrived. Oh, we have arrived. <laughs> Our Galician road trip continues. We spent some wonderful days in Ribeira Sacra and now we are in Rias Baixas, the land of Alvariño, and I'm so excited to see the sea. And it's windy as you can tell. <laughs> We're literally in the capital of Alvariño wine. Combalos is the kingdom of great seafood straight from those Rias and we have 24 hours to experience it all and in true Galician fashion it's gonna rain. So are we ready? Let's do it! Venga, let's go! Que majos, they left us a... What is it? They left us a little note. Dear Yolanda and James, welcome to Cambados. We wish you a happy stay. Olé. Treasure cards. We got a gift! Treasure map. It's a pirate, pirate treasure. Of wow. course. Ooh. Cambados treasure map. Oh, wow. The Parador is somewhere between here and there. So this Parador is a manor house from the 17th century. And at first we thought we had Charles de Gaulle's room, the one he stayed. Turns out that's the one next door, but mm -hmm. that's okay. This is the room that they spied on Charles de Gaulle. Exactly, from. more so useful. I'm, the light's gonna go, so we should start exploring. Let's do it. Seeing this building behind us with these beautiful blue tiles that gets me thinking, oh, about to get run over, gets me thinking of the time I've spent in Lisbon. And you start to really sense those commonalities between Galicia and Portugal. Even in the language, Gallego and Portuguese have a lot in common. In 2013, according to a survey, about 51% of the people here spoke Gallego. I guess maybe in the more rural areas, I'm not sure, but you do hear it around. And as usual, I always enjoy my evening walk and there's the prettiest streets around this sort of uh, old center and it's beautiful. And there is a brew dog, which I love. But we're here for the wine, Yoli. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not in brew dog country. And we're in St. James territory. My name's sake. We've got the scallop shell. Pilgrims unite. Ay, que yeah. era muy friolera. Well, yeah. yes, I. <laughs> oh, hi. Hey. You come here often? Yeah, I love a good flower market. <laughs> so coming to the flower market, I just got my first COVID check of the whole pandemic. This is uh, your first time, I can't believe it. First time, 36.2 I got. What did you get, Yoli? 36. Ay, and the man said, Ah, <laughs> see? <laughs> How would we translate that? Uh, a hot guy and a cold girl? Doesn't really... Yeah, kind of like, uh, be careful. Be careful. Fire and ice. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're ice or I'm fire, but whatever. <laughs> Te has puesto en cuatro caminos. Cuando vas de una procesión, una procesión de iglesia, de un santo, un entierro, un... siempre cuando llegas a un crucero, para se, reza se. Ah, vale. So this friend, uh, this gentleman here, explained to us that this is called a crucero. This is a crucero, and it's a cross that you place at a crossroads, and either it's a procession or someone died and they're like doing the procession you will have to stop and pray a little bit. Uh, I'm praying that dinner is good tonight. Okay. <laughs> Tell you what, one thing, Gallegos are lovely people. Oof. They're very nice, they're friendly. They, they stop and talk. They just want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> so we were lost as usual and we, and we said, where's the estuary? And he's like, all roads lead to the estuary. So even if it looks like the sea, it is not. It is an estuary and this is where the really very famous seafood and selfies come from here in Galicia. It's a huge industry and it's famous around Spain and I would say around the world. Totally. We're gonna have some of that sh famous shellfish while we're here, yes, right? Yes, please. I'm getting pretty hungry now. <laughs> Is that a hint? Uh-huh. Wink, wink. It was time for a drink, and Cambados is the capital of the Rias Baixas wine region, probably Spain's most famous region for white wine, and for white wine made from one grape in particular, Albariño. 
So, before I talk about the wine, uh. can we just comment on Yoli and Mai's practical jackets? We have never <laughs> had practical coats before, and we went shopping, we're like, we're going to Galicia, we need to be warm, it's gonna be cold, and it's the first time in my life I've had a practical coat. It's always some woolly affair that's kind of a nightmare. So. Are you loving it? I'm getting used to it. Okay. It's very big. Mm. But what I'm saying about the wine. So there's almost 200 wineries, according to Wikipedia, in Rias Baixas. And this bar here said that we're drinking their own wine. So I suspect a lot of these places, whether they just buy the wine and label it, they have mm. their own bodega. But it's true that drinking a white wine here in winter almost feels like it wouldn't make sense, right? right? There's mm. a solidity to the wine. Yeah. And just kind of almost a sea saltiness that just kind of goes. It feels like it works here with the water behind us. Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, having said this, uh, we'll see what the locals drink this time of the year. The locals are probably drinking beer. Yeah, they're probably thinking we're fools. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Happy fools. <laughs> So wandering around, we just stumbled across this really beautiful little wine bar here. And I realized something I'd completely forgotten about. Here in Rias Baixas, in the region, they also do red wine. And it's not really well known because it's mainly famous for its white wine. But um, this place, make sure you check it out. And try some red wine while you're here as well. Some really interesting reds, more Galician reds, which I kind of love, sort of lighter, fresher style. So salute to that. Hola. Hola. Buenas, ¿qué tal? Muy buenas. Hola. Muy bien. Ah, para dos. Sí. Sí. Se puede sentar. Va. Muchas gracias. So we've come into this amazing looking place and it's completely empty. It has great reviews. It's more of a lunchtime place and here in low season and with coronavirus and everything, there's the husband and wife running it. They keep coming out and talking to us, but it's dead. But it's famous for its marisco, for its seafood. And boom. Seafood is not cheap. For example, large camarones, like large prawns, like big <laughs> ones, 200 euros a kilo. So we're gonna go and find that we're gonna be very specific, targeted, <laughs> and finding some cheaper stuff in here. Find, find the cheap seafood. Blow the mortgage this month. <laughs> but this is cool, this is a very unique place. Yeah. Like it, even if it's zero. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, whatever. <laughs> you see, I was trying to be positive. Maybe because it was a video and we're supposed to be experts at this kind of thing. Or maybe because I just wanted to have a good meal with Yoli. But it all got pretty odd pretty quickly. Nobody else came, and the owner kept telling us stories that we couldn't really follow. One in particular complaining about other guests. We started to get that creeping feeling you get when you realize the restaurant you've chosen might have been a mistake. But then the first dish arrived, and it was delicious. And then a few other people came. There's people. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, I was just yeah, surprised because yeah, yeah. people arrived. Mm. One person. Yeah. He's Two closing people. the door. Cool. But then the next dish came, clams. And due to an unclear menu and unclear explanation from the owner, it was double the amount we'd ordered, which gets expensive in a seafood restaurant. You know what? Everything just smelt a little bit fishy. Plus the dish was kind of oily. Then another dish arrived and it wasn't anything to write home about. But then the owner started telling us to watch out for the cops when we left to make sure we were wearing our masks. In short, it was just all a bit odd and not a particularly enjoyable evening. So I wanted to have a little fireside chat with you guys, you know, because I think a lot of you guys out there think that Yoli and I always eat perfectly, that we always nail the spots <laughs> that we go to. No, we don't. And it's hard, right? How do you know? We're not in Madrid, we're not in our town. You know, 95% of the time we usually nail it, but hey, we'll chalk that one up to experience. And um, mm -hmm. tell you what though, it was pretty pristine that place and there was some very <laughs> cool lamps hanging from the ceiling. So I'll give the guy that. <laughs> we anyway, take that away. We're going to bed. Big day tomorrow. As the forecast suggested, it is raining. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like you haven't had a day in Galicia until you've had a day of rain. Well, right? like the waitress said this morning at the parador here, she said, well, this green landscape doesn't come for free, right? Totally, totally. <laughs> it's, it's, it ain't Madrid. And so in keeping with the weather, uh -huh. we're going to go and do something somber. We're going to go and visit what has been called the most melancholy cemetery in the world. On All Saints Day. Today is November 1st, so it's all coming together. All right. <laughs> so we realized this morning why they hold this uh, flower market once every year, a few days before All Saints. Look at this.
place is astounding. It was built originally as a Romantic church in the 12th century and in the 19th century there was a fire that, that burnt it down and the ruins were just left. Actually we read that supposedly the fire came because a priest told a sermon on, on Easter day and he said in Spanish barbaridades, he said crazy things uh -huh. and then God took revenge, I guess, I don't know, on mm. the church, which I'm gonna go with a candle falling over. I think that's the most likely explanation, but here on All Saints Day in the rain, that is drama uh -huh. and Catholics do drama, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we're back in the Plaza de Feifinans, a word I struggled to say. We were exploring here last night. This is the 16th century square, which is like the heart of this town. And it's where the market used to be. And there's also a winery right here in the city. You can go to Rios Baixas wineries all around the region. But if you're, if you're tight for time like we are, literally there's a city winery, which, and it's historic as well. So I'm kind of excited. Let's check it out. Marissa, who is part of the family, kindly opened up for us on a Sunday to give us a private tour. She told us Gil Armada was one of the first wineries to commercialize Albariño in the 1920s, and she showed us some of the original bottles. Then, before heading out to the vineyards behind the house, she showed us the tunnels beneath the square and the very impressive family home. And visiting the bodega isn't just about wine, it's like a museum so you can visit these living quarters of the family. They still live in this building and you can see rooms like this where it has some of the oldest wallpaper still in existence in Europe. These are, this is 19th century wallpaper with paintings of the, the East, the Orient, you know, and that obsession that people had with that. I mean, it's amazing. Lantana. Lantana. Beautiful name, huh? Beautiful, beautiful name, yeah. So the vineyards for the wine they make, uh, right here, just outside behind the palace, they have they have these gardens, they have they have vineyards, they have their own woods, like a bosque, their own wood. It's pretty amazing. It's like a fairy tale here, right in the middle of the city. And we think about urban wineries as being something new and hipster, but this is from the 1920s, and they have such small production. They only make about 5,000 bottles a year because everything's grown around here, and they only sell it here in the bodega. So here in Galicia, it's so damp, it's so humid that uh, you need to separate the plant from the from the ground and so that's why there's this height here uh, it's about this tall right, yoli height. <laughs> it's yoli height and that way you won't get all the fungus and all the mildew and, and all those uh, nasty insects that are going to eat the eat the plant And if everything we've seen so far wasn't enough, they even have their own forest here, right here in the middle of the city, a bosque. This is like an enchanted forest, the kind of thing you wish you had growing up. Next up, we whisked our way across Spain's longest bridge, two kilometers, to the island of Arusa, to be buffeted by the winds at the lighthouse and try and find a good lunch and right the wrongs of last night's dinner. Nice day for the beach, Yoli. Yeah. Shame I forgot my towel. Maybe after all I won't have a swim. Yeah. But it's such a wonderful day for it. Yeah, right? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you see me? Hey. You don't see me. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to clarify here though that Galicia in summer is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so this reminds me of my youth growing up in Wellington and because of the intense wind, our microphone couldn't keep up. But what I was about to say is that just in the offing, we could see the shellfish beds all stacked up like warships at anchor. And on the rocks in front of us were candles flickering in the wind, perhaps on All Saints Day for those who had died at sea. So guys, we're writing past wrongs. We got a recommendation for this place, our Mecca, that's on the island. And it looks it looks legit, it's full of locals. And just looking at the menu, it feels much easier to handle than the one last night. It's not, everything's not by weight, which is just, when I see everything by weight, I get scared. It's like 200 euros a kilo, <laughs> wee, well, wee, how much comes? Prices are normal, we've yeah. ordered a seafood spread, we've got a Lalbarino, and ah, I can't think of what 
metaphor to say for how excited I am, but if you've got one in your head, that's how excited I am. It's very promising, the it's, whole thing. It's promising. It feels very good after my swim in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, our suspicions are confirmed. This place is a magical. I mean, we've got razor clams, we've got scot thumbordinas, which are a local kind of scallop, I guess. We've got this incredible clam dish here with, with like garlic and oil, and there's octopus coming. So, Yoli, let's get in. Let's do it. Let's do it. Guys, first up the razor clams. Navajas, are they good? It's a favorite of yours, yeah? You like it? I often don't order them in Madrid because often they're tough. These are so tender. Yum. Yes, we have arrived. Ole. We have arrived. And let's get these guys okay, dripping with oil and garlic. Oh my god, Yoli. Oh my god. It's not very COVID friendly to lick your fingers, but. I know. Grilled octopus. I'm gonna get ooh, a very juicy bit here. The moment of truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Perfect bite. Two thumbs up. Three. All the thumbs. My thumb. <laughs> I know you can't come right now, but when you can, get here. Come here to Gambados, have this incredible seafood, and check out the video that is appearing somewhere here on the screen of our adventure to Ribeira Sacra. That is also great. Hasta See you. Ciao. Epa. What a man. What? I don't know, just felt like I should point. America! Yeah, Albarino! <laughs> Alright.